two of the best teams coming up against each other, number one and two in the um, in the Test Championship. India won here last. Um, they played very well, but you know, obviously we got Steve and Dave back. Uh, India Australia combined Test eleven. Ponting. Ponting, Tendulkar, Smith. Probably going to go with Steve um, on, on the test front. I mean, Virat Kohli's white ball record is is phenomenal. You know, I thought to myself, you know, you're not going to be the first concussion sub concussed out of the game. And I remember us coming into the middle and, and saying, we, we just got to hang in. We just got to hang in. You know, he's he was swinging the ball both ways. It was, I was playing and missing. Look, he's a, he's a, he's a class player. Um, and, you know, he's... And, and probably the, my favourite thing about Ben is his um, his drive and his real hunger to, to keep coming at you if it's with the bat or with the ball. We often start an interview by saying that we are joined by a special guest. Today, indeed, we have a very, very special guest, a cricketer who has come a long way in last one year or so. He started 2019 as the number 110th test batsman. Currently, he's ranked number three. He was leading run scorer in tests. In 2019, he was voted ICC's Emerging Player of the Year, Cricket Australia's Test Player of the Year. We are joined by Manas Labashen. Manas, thank you for joining us and welcome to the show. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's um, yeah, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, and thank you for those kind words. Uh, Manas, have you started training? Because I think that in Brisbane, situation is under control. Yeah, so yeah, we're training um, full squad training with, um, with our state side. So for me, that's Queensland. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, you know, it's it's always great to be out training again and and getting a bit of a run around. Um, excited to play some games. So hopefully, um, with all things aligned, we get some games underway um, in the sort of next couple of months. We all know your love and passion for the game. So how badly did you miss cricket during this phase? Yeah, look, I mean, I, I enjoyed the break because I played about eighteen months straight of cricket. So it was a nice uh, break, but. I'm always playing cricket um, if it's not, you know, at the nets or in a game. It's it's in the garage at home or mucking around in the backyard or coming up with different games. So um, that's what I really occupied my time with in, in coronavirus um, during that real lockdown extensive part here. Um, but, you know, apart from that, it, it's been um, yeah, it's been challenging in some ways, but also there's been a lot of positives to gain out of this time as well. Uh, so, cricket is back, international cricket is back. Are you following the England versus West Indies series? It, it was an exciting first test and then the second test was also an exciting game. Yeah, I am. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been watching sort of till about 10.30, 11 o'clock here. So, till about lunch, just after lunch. Um, and it's been, it's been great to see just test cricket back on TV and um, being able to watch. I think it's such an, uh, you know... The contest and the challenge, it's so good that people are able to, to actually get some live sport and live cricket back on TV. And Manus, what about the changes? Because in the first two tests, we have seen that once the ball gets older, there's not that much of help for the bowlers. So do you think that ICC should reconsider the changes, saliva ban? Should there be a substance which is allowed, you can apply on the ball? Look, I, I'm not in any space to really come up with those rules. I, I do, I, I have seen that the ball, you know, there's been a lot higher price on that new ball sort of wicket, especially mm. in England. Um, both of the grounds that they played at can get quite flat when the ball gets a little bit older. So I don't know how much of a difference it's made with no saliva, but, um, you know, one thing in England that you can usually count on is a bit of swing bowling. Um, um, even if the ball does get older, and it, we haven't managed to see as much of that in England. So, um, yeah, look, I think as long as, um, you know, there's some flexibility and for us to keep trying to find the best way to go about it, I think that's ideal. How do you look back at your performances in last one year? After named as concussion substitute, things have changed drastically for you. How you look back at that journey? Um, yeah, look, it's been... It's been a really exciting year. Um, you know, I, I probably, you, you probably couldn't have expected to, the way it's turned out, um, you know, to go to Glamorgan and, and perform over there and then be able to take that into the ashes and then into the home summer. Um, but, you know, as every cricketer, you, you go through a period and you've done really well and, and I know teams are going to be 
even more prepared than they were before. Um, they're going to come harder at me. They're going to know my game better. So for me, it's about, you know, not putting one performance together, um, you know, one season together, but to be as consistent as I can. You know, there's so many great examples, you know, Virat, um, Steve Smith, David Warner, you know, those guys are putting seasons back to back together, um, putting back to back seasons together for the last 10 years. So, you know, there's some good people leading the way there. And, um, you know, my aim is to try and follow that, that, that sort of regime. Uh, Manas, you spoke about Virat, you spoke about Steve Smith, you spoke about David Warner. All of you will be in action when India tour Australia. So how are you looking forward to that series? Because last time around you lost the series. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, you know, two of the best teams coming up against each other, number one and two in the um, in the Test Championship, yeah. coming coming to head, um, you know, two top quality batting lineups, two top quality bowling lineups. Um, yeah, so it's going to be very exciting. Um, I can't really wait. Um, you know, it's still a while away now. It's probably four months away still, but... Um, yes. You know, I am looking really forward to, to that challenge and to, to getting out there and really getting in the battle. You have spent a lot of time with Steve Smith. We have heard about, you know, your bromance with Smith. And how do you see, like, what separates Steve Smith from the rest? Because we have, whatever we have heard that he talks about, you know, more than skills, he talks about the mindset of the batsman or a cricketer. So how do you see Steve Smith and what separates him from the rest? Look, he's a phenomenal player. I think the way he thinks about the game and, like you said, that mental side and the way he can get himself in that mental space um, to work out how to how to score runs, that's what separates him. Um, you know, and, and I mean, yeah, like I said, I think that's one of the, the greatest things he has is his strength is his mental application. And Manus, uh, if we go back to your journey and... At the starting of 2018, you played that Sydney test against India. At that time, there were question marks on your place in the side. But now everyone talk about as you, as you as the mainstay of the Australian team. So what have been the turning point for your career? Like a stint with Glamorgan or the knock at Lords? What do you think? Oh, look, I think they both sort of intertwine with each other. Um, look, my season to go to Glamorgan, you know, Glamorgan took a punt. Um, took a risk on me as a player. I wasn't really, um, my credentials weren't, weren't as good. Um, and I was able to go over there and really just change my, the way I thought about the game and, and really, really have a run scoring focus. I think sometimes me personally, uh, you know, I was very concerned about technique um, and, you know, I, I, I sort of the mentality of really going out there and just trying to find a way to score runs. Doesn't matter how you do it. Uh, was sort of one of my mental changes when I went over there. But then just trusting and, and working with Matt Maynard, the coach there, um, yeah. and my coach, Neil DeCosta, uh, on, on different ways to go about it in those conditions. And, you know, I found something, I found some stuff that really worked for me. And I was able to, when I did get that opportunity at Lords, put those things into place there. Um, and, you know, when you're always coming off the back of runs and, and performances, you're, you're feeling good. So you're always at a much better chance of scoring runs. For those who don't know about Manas, stint with Glamorgan, he scored 1,114 runs in 10 matches, 500s and 5 half centuries. So that was phenomenal. And coming to the Lord's Test match, what was going through your mind when you, you know, went into bat and especially after that bouncer hit you as well, the Jofra Archer's bouncer when it hit you? Um, yeah, I mean, I was, look, uh, when, when when Steve got hit, uh, uh, it definitely started going through my mind that, you know, that I might come in um, as a concussion sub, you know, this might happen. Um, but then when he went out to bat again, obviously, I was like, no, nah, he's fine. Um, it probably helped that um, I didn't have that much time to think about it. I only found out um, the morning of, of, of the game, about halfway through warm-up, I got told that I was playing. Um, so it didn't give me much time to sort of think about it. Um, I was able to walk out there just straight up into the contest. And, you know, I was, you know, when that ball hit me, I was just like, look, you know, just get up. Just it doesn't matter. You know, I thought to myself, you know, you're not going to be the first concussion sub concussed out of the game. So, um, you know, that was sort of my thinking um, at that stage. And, and then just getting on and getting in the contest. 
And Manus, you were getting starts in the Ashes, but then came the Australian home summer. And, you know, things just got uh, started for you with 100. So what was going through your mind? And you spoke about Neil DeCosta, your childhood coach, and Matt Bannard. How influential they have been in your career? Oh, look, I've been working with um, with Neil since I was 18, 18. So that's about eight years, seven, no, six, seven years. So since I was 18, uh, we've been working together. Um, and, and then, you know, Matt Maynard was just the perfect mix, you know, when I came over there just to help me, you know, at a stage in my career where, you know, he really, really put confidence into me, trusted the way I played and the way I thought about the game, which gave me a lot of confidence to go out there and play, um, you know, a really positive brand of cricket and, and, and exciting and putting pressure back on the bowlers. Um so, you know, they were both very influential. And um, and then, you know, the, the, the half centuries at Lord, um, sorry, through the, sum, through the England summer, um, you know, some of those innings that I played in England, I would still say are some of my best innings that I've ever played, um, just in the conditions and the situation. Um, so in, in that circumstance, I think that gave me a lot of confidence coming back to Australia and knowing that my technique and, um, everything that I put in place was was good enough, and um, that I just needed to make sure when I get in, get a start, I get a big score. Virat Kohli versus Steve Smith. So how do you see this contest? And you have spent a lot of time with Steve Smith. We have seen Virat Kohli bat. So how do you see both these batsmen overall across formats and in tests? Jeez, that's that's a tough. tough um, look, I think Stephen Test cricket has just shown in 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 any conditions that he can find a way. I think that's what, you know, really makes makes him the best, the number one test player in the world, um, is that, you know, uh, he he finds a way in, 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 he's found a way in India, he's found a way to score in England. Um, he's obviously very consistent in Australia. Um, so it, it seems that it doesn't matter where you're playing or what conditions that he's finding a way. Now, Virat's probably done a very similar thing. Um Look, I'm probably going to go with Steve um, on, on the test front. I mean, Vera Kohli's white ball record is is phenomenal. Um, you know, the way he finishes innings, the way he finishes um, matches off, um, you know, the way he chases. I think for me personally, I've learned a lot from him and just yeah. watching him, how he goes about um, chasing and, and finishing innings off. Um, but, I mean, yeah, for me, it's just about learning from everyone, um, you know, n- n- not just from those, you know, high-end top players, but from anyone. If it's um, down at club cricket and you see someone do something really good, it can make you, remind you, to, you know, make sure that you need to make sure you're on top of that part of your game. So I'm really learning from anyone and from everyone and taking the best parts of everyone's game and trying to add them to yours. You spoke about Virat Kohli and his, you know, white ball all uh, skills. And now you have also made a good start to your white ball cricket in a limited over format in one day. Now, since the T20 World Cup has been postponed, so how do you think like this time will help you because you want to play all three formats? And now this is an opportunity for you to cement your place in the shortest format as well. Yeah. Um, oh, look. You know, for me, it's just about scoring runs for Australia. It doesn't matter if I'm playing just two formats or if I'm playing all three. Um, I need to make sure in whichever format I'm playing, I'm being consistent, I'm understanding my role, and the main thing is helping the team win. You know, if I'm helping the team win games, um, that's the main focus. So um, so if I'm continuing to do that, um, I'm sure there'll be opportunities open in that T20 format um, down the track, and, and, and hopefully, um, you know, I can take those with both hands. Uh, Manas Sachin Tendulkar was down under in Australia for the bushfire cricket match. And when when he was asked about which batsman reminds you of yourself, he took your name and he spoke about your Lord's innings and how your positive mindset uh, was the difference between you and the others. So how do you take those praises and how big a confidence boost that is for you? Yeah, very. Um, you look that, you know, it brings goosebumps to my arms. Um, you know, when you hear a player of that calibre, um, talk highly of you. Um, so yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I, I'm glad that um, he was able to see those things. You know, sometimes as a player, when you're out there, you don't always feel that way, but it's good that that's how it's coming off. Um, yeah, and whenever whenever someone like of that calibre comments um, and says those words, you know, you really take it on board. And 
you know, for me, it's about just making sure that I'm improving every day and, and really trying to be the best player I am and, um, you know, continuing to, to score big hundreds and, and win games. Um, but, yeah, you know, I was very thankful for those words. Manas, throughout your career, you know, and as I, as I said earlier, that at the start of 2018, when you played that Sydney test, there were question marks over your place. So did ever any doubts came across your mind that, you know, I need to score runs, I need to perform well, because uh, I have, like, uh, I have read an interview of uh, Neil DeCosta, your childhood coach, and he said that, I told Manas that the person standing between you and success is you yourself. Yeah, exactly. Um, I actually remember Neil um, called me, what, um, it must have been at that Sydney test when I got a chance, and he said, you, I think he said something about you can't keep wasting the opportunities. You've got to take them. You know, your, your, your opportunities are coming less and less every time another one passes. And, and that was a really good realisation, you know, to, to almost just put the urgency on making sure you're not wasting opportunities. If you're getting an opportunity, even if it's through concussion or through something else, that you're, you know, grabbing it with both hands because opportunities run out at some point. So um, that was a really good realisation. And um, obviously, I didn't take that opportunity completely, but um, I was able to really put things in place to make sure that when I got another opportunity to, to play for Australia, um, that I was able to really take it. And Manas, your next assignment is most likely the England tour. So how are you looking forward to it? Because England are an outstanding white ball unit. Yeah, excited. Once again, it's the same as India. You know, I can't wait to play you know, the, the, the best one-day side and, and, and challenge myself um, against them. Um, you know, they just come off the World Cup and, you know, we're, we're sort of trying to find our form and find our right combination. So hopefully I can contribute and, and really play my role really well in that side um, at number four um, and, and just keep putting big scores on the board uh, when I get an opportunity. And as a player, as a... As an Australian team member, how do you look at Ben Stokes? Because the way he has been performing in last two years, like in 2019, then in 2020, he has continued his form. We all saw the Headingley test. Single-handedly, he won a match for England. And now again, in the last test match against West Indies, he showed his class. Probably the best all-rounder going around. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, his form has been tremendous. Um, he's a match winner, which he showed at Headingley. Um, and he showed in the World Cup. So, um, look, he's a he's a he's a class player, um, and you know he's and, and probably the, my favourite thing about Ben is, is his um, his drive and his real hunger to to keep coming at you if it's with the bat or with the ball. You know, I, I remember um, facing him at, at Headingley, um, probably one of the toughest spells I've ever faced. Um, um, him at Headingley, I think he bowled an 11 or a 12 over spell at me and Matthew Wade. And I remember us coming into the middle and, and saying, we, we just got to hang in. We just got to hang in. You know, he's, he was swinging the ball both ways. It was, I was playing and missing. I think I might've nicked off twice and got dropped by Bearstow and Root in the slips. So, you know, I just remember, you know, him keep coming for 11 overs and his pace didn't drop at all. So do you think he is the MVP right now across formats? Because we have seen in one days as well, he winning games for England in test cricket. In T20s, he's still, you know, uh, as far as bowling is concerned, he needs to improvise a bit. But otherwise, in across these formats, he is the MVP right now. Oh, I mean, he, his performances have been so consistent through all formats. I mean, David Warner's been very good um, for Australia in, in over the summer, and then in one day cricket, he's been so consistent. Same with Steve. Um, and I mean, Virat has been unbelievable in all three. I think he averages fifty-seven in Test cricket, and fifty, maybe sixty in one day cricket, and something fifty odd in T Twenty cricket. So, um, they're incredible stats. So, um, you know. Um, it, it's really hard to, to put that. But in terms of match performing and match winning innings, um, yeah, he goes a long way um, you know, in, that, in that category. So we have spoke about many great cricketers of this current generation. So I want to ask you if you could name uh, India-Australia combined Test 11. 
uh, we will uh, like we will select a time uh, time frame and we will start from 2000 till now you have to pick an india australia combined australia uh, sorry combined test 11 jeez um i'll probably open the batting with matthew hayden yeah that just for yeah probably hayden and Sawag so Sawag yeah probably Sawag um probably going to go with Ponting Ponting Tendulka Smith Coley Coley at 6 Well I mean you can you can hedge your bets so maybe we you can move Ponting to 6 if you want um Maybe even move such into three. Maybe even such in open. Maybe. I mean, there's so many options there. Um, and in terms of bowlers, uh, oh, keeper Gilchrist. Yeah. Uh, um, keeper is Gilly, and then you know you have Warn, will be my spinner. Nathan Lyon could be my second spinner if we're playing in India. Um, or, or you know Ashwin if we're playing in India. um he uh, is very good in those conditions it's pat if cummins you have to pick three seamers if you have to pick three seamers because in your top 5 6 there are not enough batsmen who could roll their arms over you have to pick three fast bowlers yeah so i'm three probably going to have three fast bowlers i'm going to have to go with cummins mcgrath and probably bumra yeah solid team solid team uh, i i think i i look that's just You know, you didn't give me much notice here, so I rattled through yeah. them a bit. But um, yeah, it, it's it's pretty tight there. And coming back to the next Border Gavaskar Trophy, do you think Australia start favourites? Because last time around they were like the key players were missing in David Warner and Steve Smith. Now you are also back and you are in top form. So do you think Australia start favourites for the upcoming Border Gavaskar Trophy? Look, um, I don't really think it matters who starts favourites. It matters who starts well. Um, so, look, you know, India won here last. Um, they played very well, but you know, obviously, we got Steve and Dave back, so it's going to be a real, you know, four test matches. Um, and you know, it's going to be whoever starts the test series the best um, will get a bit of momentum and hopefully be able to run with it. and with t20 world cup now being postponed there's a possibility of ipl are you like looking forward to it because right now you are not in any of the squads but is ipl on your radar as well yeah look i definitely want to challenge myself in in the best t20 comp in the world i think um if there's an opportunity that comes up um then yeah i'll definitely be um be interested in it but at the moment i need to make sure i stay focused and make sure i um you know don't get too far ahead of myself and make sure i'm keep performing I um, mean every format that I'm playing for Australia and for for Glamorgan for Queensland um for anyone so yeah and I want to finish off this with you predicting the result or the outcome of the test series between England and West Indies seeing the uh, seeing both the teams play in the first two games what do you think the final test at Old Trafford Old Trafford will be like uh look I think England have got a bit of momentum now um and you know i i don't know i think stuart board's probably going to play the next game um and if they put their best bowling attack on the field um then it's going to be hard to go past england winning that one okay manus thank you so much for thank your you time it was a pleasure having you thank you mate thank you